Intel might just make a pretty cool move for their next batch of Coffee Lake CPUs. What's up guys, I'm Snows and this is your boot sequence. So you all heard the leaks about the 8-core 8-thread i7 and the 8-core 16-thread i9 coming to our desktops fairly soon, and some of you in the comments actually raised some concern over that i9 specifically because i9 has been exclusive to the enthusiast or high-end desktop platform so far. Well, it seems like Intel is doing the smart thing here and keeping that i9 with a relatively low core count for an i9 in their mainstream line of products. According to a 3 d Mark score posted with a genuine Intel CPU, we can see what seems to be that i9 on a Z370 motherboard. We can tell that it's the 9900K by looking at the core count and the physical to logical processor count. Not only that, but some pictures have also leaked showing an H310 ASRock motherboard sporting an 8-core CPU support badge on the front of the box. Now the picture comes from video cards. And I usually avoid them as a source because we both know how accurate they can be sometimes. But with all of the commotion over the CPU, I don't think that this picture is fake. So with the 3D Mark's core and the photo, we can assume that Intel is not locking their 8-core monsters to Z390. So for once, I want to say thanks Intel. You might make some of your customers save some money by not buying a new motherboard. With all of that, we also get a glimpse at the clock speeds of the i9 and it's a 3.1 gigahertz base clock with two two cores or more in this case, we actually don't know, that will boost up to 5 gigahertz. Links are all in the description if you want to take a look at them, so let me ask you this question. Do you think that Intel is trying to give consumer more choice by adding those two new CPUs into their mainstream platform, or is it just because they don't really have a choice? Let me know down below. Moving on, we have EA, which decided to comment on the subject of crossplay. It seems like the company is keen on the idea of making this happen. Now, does this mean that we'll have crossplay in Battlefield 5 when it comes out? Probably not. While the CEO of EA said that crossplay is an important part of their future, he also mentioned that they are still looking at key franchises to see how they can create crossplay. His belief is that on a three to five year time horizon, a great part of gaming experiences will exist in the cloud and the rest will be streamed to your devices directly. I also think that this is where things are going. CPUs and GPUs might become less and less important in gaming, especially with things that we've heard so far. Services like Nvidia's GeForce Now, or even the xCloud service that Xbox is apparently working on. But don't be scared, that doesn't mean that the PC master race will die off though. No matter the future, I will still strive to have the best component in my system. What about you? If it becomes all streaming, will you go easier on your upgrades? Let me know down below. Now let's jump into in case you didn't know. It seems like Asus has just accidentally published its list of Z390 motherboard. How is it possible? Well, it was a simple BIOS update page that gave it up. On their new BIOS function update post last week, they listed the compatible products and in that list, 13 new Z390 boards are shown. Little bit of an update, the page was taken down this morning, I guess it really wasn't supposed to go out. Kind of sucks though, I didn't have time to screenshot it. In gaming, it seems like Fortnite for Android is coming soon, although it might be a timed exclusive for the Samsung Galaxy Note 9. Apparently, upon release, the device will come preloaded with Fortnite and somewhere around 100 to 150 bucks worth of V-Bucks. That's a lot of V-Bucks, right? I'm not sure, I don't really calculate these things. Also, if you were worried about your device not being able to run the game, don't worry too much about it. Epic just released a list of compatible Fortnite mobile devices and the list goes all the way back to some phones in 2016, so if you have a semi-recent phone, you should probably be able to play no problems. Then we have some available pre-orders for the Nintendo Switch Online service. Pre-orders? I mean, is that necessary? You can pre-order a 12-month subscription for 20 bucks or a 3 months one for $8. As we're getting closer to the September release date of the service, remember that you won't be able to play online when the subscription service opens. Although, with the subscription, you do get access to some sweet library of classic NES games. Now let's answer a question from you guys and today it is, why did you have to move? Why the new studio? Well I had to move because the basement apartment I lived in was horrible. I paid almost two grand in heating last winter alone and turns out it was a good thing I left that place because it got flooded two days ago. I did keep renting the garage as a temporary storage solution for me and that means that all of my storage is now flooded, at least most of my precious possessions. 
are already moved out, but some things like this PC and its monitor that I kept to play games with friends got some water in it. And I lost all of my winter coats and a couch. Great, right? I lost a lot more, I just don't wanna list it out. Anyways, that's pretty much it for the video. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment. Leave me a question down below and click right here to see the latest video, it'd be greatly appreciated. This is free content. This is where you click to see the latest video and right here to subscribe to the channel. This is for a subscription service. Somebody told me I was repetitive in the ending. I'm doing this on purpose. All right, so y'all stay frosty. Have yourselves a great one and I'll see you on the next video. Stay frosty.